line with us is our old buddy Kevin Camps. He is the radioactive waste specialist at Beyond Nuclear, beyondnuclear.org, of course, the website, and Beyond Nuclear, also the Twitter handle. And Kevin, I'm, I'm looking at this, um, at this piece in today's New York Times by David Sanger and William Broad titled, Russia's Small Nuclear Arms, a Risky Option for Putin and Ukraine Alike. And they point out that uh, we created this 70-pound bomb, they called it the Davy Crockett, uh, back in the day. It had about one thousandth of the power of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. There, there are some, according to the New York Times, there are some of these strategic nuclear weapons who are about a third of the Hiroshima bombs. That, that's their smallest, their Iskander payload. It's one, th and the Hiroshima bomb was 15 to 19 kilotons, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And um, so they're smaller than that, but they also have a bunch of them that are larger than that. Um, what, what's the deal here with these t so-called tactical nuclear weapons? And what would the consequences be of one having, uh, you know, being exploded somewhere over Ukraine? Well, like you said, Hiroshima was around 15 kilotons. That's 15,000 tons of TNT dynamite. So even one thousandth of that is still 15 tons of dynamite, which can take out maybe not an entire city downtown like at Hiroshima, but some blocks of a city and kill all the people in those blocks. There's also the radioactivity that's generated in that microsecond of nuclear fission that's going to be deadly fallout forever into the future. And, uh, you know, like you said, there's a spectrum of sizes that goes all the way from one thousandths of a Hiroshima bomb to sometimes tens or even hundreds of Hiroshima bombs. They're still considered tactical or battlefield only because the strategic nuclear weapons these days are, you know, a megaton, a million tons. Um, some are hundreds of tons. So, the size of the blast is going to determine how many people are killed, how much of a city is destroyed. But the radioactive fallout will also have to do with how much nuclear material is in the, the pits of these weapons. But it's nothing compared to the radioactivity at a, nu at a nuclear power plant, for mm -hmm. example, in the cores of reactors in the high-level radioactive waste storage pools. Right. So we, we saw, I mean, you know, the, the fans of nuclear power are running around saying, well, you know, only a few people died from, uh, you know, uh, Chernobyl and uh, nobody died from Fukushima and, you know, quack, quack, quack. I mean, you've knocked down those myths and, and feel free to do that again right now in short form. But um, uh, how would a nuclear, well, just, you know, what, what would the consequences be of a nuclear weapon going off in Ukraine? Well, you'd kill all the people within a certain radius of the blast. You'd also have the fallout that would then blow with the wind and flow with the water and contaminate the drinking water supply, the food supply. So those would be the blast and radiological consequences of a nuclear weapons use in Ukraine. Right. Just one. Right. There's also the escalation that it would likely lead to with larger and larger nuclear weapons maybe being deployed on either side. I mean, the U.S. and NATO have 100 pre-deployed tactical nuclear weapons in Europe, but the, the Russians have 1,000 to 2,000, and that's just the tactical. And then there's the strategic, which uh, between the U.S. and Russia, that's more than 90 percent of the nuclear weapons in the world. And the rest are in certain, you know, NATO allied countries like France and the U.K. And then perhaps you could say certain Russian allied countries like uh, China, for example. Right, right. And, and uh, now I, I heard this morning on NPR is uh, that uh, Russia has, or that Putin has ordered his people to seize one of the nuclear power plants in, in uh, Ukraine. Did you catch that? Yeah, that's the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia province, which Russia now claims as Russian territory. And they've had it, um, they seized it militarily in early March in the first days of the invasion. They've held it ever since, but the Ukrainian workforce is still there. Mm. And another recent development was last weekend, the director of the nuclear power plant, who is Ukrainian, was detained, arrested, and held incognito by the Russian military. He's since been released. He's fled to Ukrainian-controlled territory with his family. But, um, I mean, that's... What I was getting at was you've got six reactors at Zaporizhia. You have the high-level radioactive waste storage pools. So instead of pounds of nuclear material in a tactical nuclear weapon, that's what forms the radioactive fallout that you worry about when one of those explodes. Not pounds. We're talking hundreds of tons of nuclear material in, in operating reactor cores, 
you're talking about thousands of tons of high-level radioactive waste in those storage pools and the dry cast storage. The fallout from explosions and fires at a nuclear power plant would dwarf nuclear weaponry in terms of how much radioactivity would be released into the environment to uh, hurt people. Is there is there a concern that Zaporizhia and, and any of the other nuclear power plants in Ukraine, I understand they have a number of them, are at risk for this sort of thing? I mean, it, it was the Russians seizing the plant maybe a good thing because it stabilized, you know, the, the fighting in the area, or is it a bad thing because they don't know what the hell they're doing and it's setting up another Chernobyl or something like that? Very bad thing. I mean, the, the initial military seizure was highly risky. The Ukrainian workforce was warning over the loudspeakers on site, please stop firing at us. This is a nuclear power plant. That was just the beginning. Now for the past several long weeks, there have been almost daily shelling of Zaporizhia nuclear power plant or its vicinity. It's lost connection to the grid. It's been thrown onto emergency diesel generators. Every one of these is a game of chicken, risking a nuclear catastrophe that would dwarf Chernobyl. There's six reactors at Zaporizhia. One reactor exploded and burned at Chernobyl. There are six at Zaporizhia. There are the high-level radioactive waste storage pools, which would be a mega catastrophe. Another nuclear power plant implicated recently was the South Ukraine nuclear power plant near Nikolaev, which had a Russian missile strike within 900 feet of the three reactors there. So we're, we're dodging radioactive bullets it's hard to exaggerate how bad it would be if one of these reactors, one of these pools were blown up or set on fire. Wow. Well, I guess the, you know, when Ukraine gets rebuilt, rebuilding solar and wind would be a good idea. Uh, Kevin, exactly. Kevin Camps is the radioactive waste specialist with Beyond Nuclear. Beyondnuclear.org is the website and Beyond Nuclear is the Twitter handle. Kevin, thank you for dropping by. It's always informative speaking with you.